All right, and we are on the air. <laughs> Alrighty. Welcome to our Pixel Farm overview and tour. Today we're going to be getting you to the Pixel Farm, introducing you to kind of the basics of how it works, how to reserve, what features the Pixel Farm has to offer, and then finally we're going to end with a little Pixel challenge. So I am Cole, as you can see from the sign above me. This is the hallway I live down, so if you'd follow me. <laughs> All of the coordinates are in the overview document that I shared. So if you need to find your way back to the Pixel Farm at a later date, hopefully that's pretty easy. I don't think I've actually been to this Pixel Frame. I've been to the other ones. Uh -huh. are. Here is my tunnel. Just go down here as the nether forest changes into the only living forest. Was that natural nether, nether forest that you dug through or did you make it like that? Um, There was a tiny bit of forest kind of at the edge of where I was digging through and I kind of just extended it nice. conveniently. <laughs> So, my base is that away to the right, but we're going to go to the left over to the pixel. We will enter underneath the frame into the pixel storage, and since it's nighttime, we can go ahead and sleep. Alrighty. So at the Pixel Farm, the main feature is our Pixel Storage. You'll see that we have all of the wool colors and we have a pretty good collection of most of the wool colors. Um, so if you needed to fill most of a map in any one color, you could probably do that for most of the colors. But if there's any reason to need a color, we also have our state of the art Happy Sheep Auto Shearer. It is 100% voluntary. We allow our sheep to come through and get sheared when they choose to. There's access to water without going through the auto shearer. So if they are feeling cold that day, they're welcome to just keep their wool. There's overflow in here if you ever need to check, but there's also dye stored here if you ever need to change colors and harvest a specific color passively while you're working on a different color. Apparently in the next update, we're going to be able to re-dye wool too. That's cool. That'd be great. When you are getting pixels from the selection, we generally always want to pick up from the bottom row because that will auto replenish. When we're dropping colors back off, put them back up in the top and they'll filter back into the system. Be careful to put the right color in the correct thing to you know minimize lag. We don't have any sort of like major sorter here just because that would be a pain and I don't want to dig down into the ground to make the storage do a weird redstone thing anyway. So we just have some hoppers. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, before we go up top, I want to show you all the uh, the other big feature that is down underneath the pixel farm, and that is the rare abundant nature research lab. So if we pop over here and cross the alleyway and follow the path down here, we have a place that includes a zombie spawner that you can turn on if you so choose but also has a bed and a jukebox to play some music, some uh, harvestable amethyst buds over here, if you like, Wait, you can as well as just... This? I mean, these are buds that I got from the windfish, so they are 
you can keep harvesting these. Oh. I don't know how amethyst works still. I don't have any myself. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to get off track. I just uh, yeah. was shocked. No, you're fine. <laughs> yes, the center ones are budding amethyst blocks. So careful not to break those, but you can keep harvesting wow. these off the edge. Get, you get them with silk touch. You can get a nice piece that you can pick up and take home. Or if you get them without silk touch, you get the individual shards that you can then use for things uh, like the looking glasses. This is our zombie spawner and examiner. This allows the zombies come up here and the spawner is directly above you. So you have to take down that shroom light in order to activate the spawner and then they will appear right in front of you. But this will also allow you to examine the zombies from <laughs> angles that you may have never <laughs> seen a zombie from. In here, we also have a lava farm and a dripstone farm, as well as a cooker and some vine farms, just kind of some general workstations if you just need to take a break from pixel farming and maybe heal up some tools or get some XP. Just chill down here. So that's the research lab. Feel free to use it. Just don't forget to put the light back to turn the spawner off when you leave. That's pretty much the only rule. And now we can go up to the actual pixel farm. There's a couple of different entrances up to the pixel farm. This one goes up to just kind of the middle. This corner also gives you access to the rail system that goes around the top edge and the left side. So if you need to use the rail to just quickly go to the opposite corner, you can do that. You can also go up these stairs and this whole uh, bridge goes, again, that whole top and the bottom, the side, the left side of the map. So you can use it for screenshots or looking at things from a different angle to try to figure stuff out. You'll see that because there isn't any artwork here, we can see the background of the mayor portraits. Whenever we have a new mayor, we will come in and do a fresh mayor portrait just by filling in the center area. But whenever we're doing another piece of art, we'll just lay carpet directly on this, on top of this glass. Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> this is still a work in progress and uh, still a test in progress. So you may see the grid change a little bit, be more obvious or less obvious as we figure out exactly how to integrate keeping this background but it will ensure that we can do mayor portraits on a timely basis and make them the exact same background every time, um, but not hindering the actual ability to use the pixel farm for other stuff. So I'm in the process of actually moving this grid up a little bit. So you can see where, you, where the wood is exposed, um, there's this grid to help you orient on the whole farm. And when you buy a template from Pixel Perspectives, or if you make your own template, I highly recommend integrating this grid into the template you make so that you can figure out and work on just a certain chunk at a time, because that comes in handy. Um, so like I said, I'm moving this grid up. So where it's covered, currently some of that grid is obscured, but I'm fixing that by just moving the light blocks up a block only on the main grid lines. So you'll still be able to see those big grid lines all the way through. Um, and I think that will help keep the grid super helpful, even with the background being a little funky right now. Um. Okay, I think those were the most important bits that I wanted to make sure to show you the the last little bit of like 
technique, hands-on thing, and kind of a surprise end challenge is just I want to show you kind of what is the quickest way to lay down pixels. So I need everybody to go down and get uh, two stacks of carpet in their chosen color. And make sure it's in your hotbar, both of them. I'm just going to get whatever a color that you all don't pick. Wait, should we get two colors or one color and two stacks? One color, two stacks. What color did you get? We have yellow and orange. What does the sky say over there? Forest? It says the only oh. forest. <laughs> it, was, it was a little backwards for and sideways, the map so I couldn't I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's for my map of my base, so <laughs> it makes sense on the map. <laughs> well, now oh, okay. The skies... Here is... Sorry, go ahead. Here is the map. Um, make sure you open the map when you are inside the border of the pixel frame. <laughs> Um, it's fine if you open it outside, that just means you'll have to open another one to actually be able to see what's going on in the pixel frame. I highly recommend anytime you're here working on something, just grabbing a map and putting it in your offhand so that you can kind of always orient where it is you're doing something. Um, and something that I have found that actually Ruby helped me figure out is that placing happens just a teeny tiny bit faster when your cursor is farther away from you. So the farthest block that you can target is going to place just a tiny bit faster than like the next block in. That's not super perceptible uh, when you're just placing individual things, but when you are placing, you know, a thousand, a thousand carpets over and over again, then that kind of stuff definitely becomes noticeable. Also, if either of you are using, are either of you using a controller? Yes, trial yes, Brian no. Okay, I've noticed that on controllers, um, it's every like fourth carpet does a double carpet. So I usually just hold the, the trigger down long enough to do three and then I let off for just a second and then do three more. I don't know if it does that for other things, if it, that's the rhythm of carpet placing, but just keep that in mind, if that happens to you, it's not you, it's not just you, you're not crazy, it does happen. It's just because of the timing of things. It happens on mouse so, too. So the challenge, yeah, okay. So the challenge I wanted to do was, I wanted to see how, who could, the quickest draw a single line all the way across the grid oh, no. it's it's 128 by 128 so two stacks should theoretically get us there if not it's just who gets rid of their two stacks the fastest um, and so i think i was just gonna start right here and this will be my row and we can I'll get ready and get set and go. <laughs> ah, you gotta go back if you do double carpets. This is what's gonna be my fault. <laughs> it's very fun watching it on the map. I forgot that I had two stacks, I just stood there like an idiot for a second, like, huh? I met a carpet. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, trial, trial definitely won. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs>
So, child, I was gonna put together some kind of like prize pack for whoever won, but I I didn't come up with anything. So I was just gonna give you like a bunch of maps and like first dibs on reserving the pixel frame. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have any other ideas, feel free to let me know if you have other things that there's you a, would want from a, a free template or something. It's <laughs> itch. <laughs> <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions about, like, pixel arting in particular? Um, we also have erasers that are just water buckets that I usually keep here too. Um, there's more technique in general tips in the document that I feel like are pretty self-explanatory, but feel free to like just message me if any of them don't make sense or if you have more questions. Also, I'm happy to help with artwork if you have ideas and you just like you know, want to reserve it for a couple of weeks, but know that you know obviously we get done faster if you had another person you know, just laying pixels, you know, for a couple of hours or something. I have, I'm happy to help with that. You know, yeah. I have a question. Um, do you have yeah. recommendations on like sites to use to like? turn a picture into a pixel art that you want to do because some of them are kind of complicated they seem and i don't really know how to get started with that as somebody who has not done any pixel art yet and wants to yes i really like just like for making a basic image or for like putting text on an image or something canva is pretty approachable in my experience and pretty simple and free and online you don't have to install anything it's just an online thing mm -hmm. um and then for getting that, like, it, then you can, like, also crop it into a square thing, an image. So you can then uh, upload that image into its, and I also linked this in the document. It's called Map Art Craft. I'm pretty sure it's also what Mayfair uses to oh, Sorry, pixelize. I haven't looked at the document yet. <laughs> if it's no, you're fine. I'll go um, it. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, so there's two, those are the two websites that I think will come in the most handy. Uh, and like I have the Adobe programs, so that's like that's what I use for stuff. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if you but that means that I can totally help. If you have an image that you're like, I just what part of this image do you think detail wise will work? I'm I'm here for those kinds of questions and like helping you figure out like oh like this is a cool picture but if we cropped into the face a little bit more we would probably be able to get the detail in the eyes or something you know just conversations like that like mayfrey and i have so many conversations that are just like what if it was blue though <laughs> like just like doing all sorts of just like little kind of back and forths about strategizing uh, how an art map art will work so you know don't hesitate to just ask me if you need help either making the image or deciding on the image or making the template, because I can help with those. Um, also, thank you for answering that, but also another question I have is, I, I, I'm pretty proficient in, in Photoshop, so I don't have any like issues with that, <laughs> but um, I have the image I want to do, I want the map art I want to do, this is probably not good for my first time, so I'll probably want to do something smaller, but the one I want to do is going to be multiple maps. Is there, like, an mm -hmm. easy way to know how to split it up between, um, like, because, you, cause you know, you have to, like, cut it down. I guess you just make sure they're all right. evenly cut into squares, but it seems... Right, it's 128 pixels by 128 yeah. pixels, so if you do that in Photoshop you know, times four to so make a single Photoshop document that's, mm -hmm. you know, twice that if it's it's a four map square or something, or, you know, do that math and, and just yeah. make it that many pixels in dimension. Um, and then you can just put guides down at the right spots so that you know where the breakpoints are. I feel a little nervous. I'm going to do all this work and then it's not going to line up. <laughs> No, I get that. Um, 
again, that's the thing that I can help with. I often use um, Illustrator too, just because I like also turn the pixel grid on in Photoshop so you can actually see oh, yeah. the grid lines. I bet that'll make you feel a lot more confident. Yeah, I forgot that existed. Because <laughs> then you could, you could put these grid lines down in your Photoshop document too, so that then when you're making it, you can be like, if you're on your second Mac, you're like, oh, that line was at B3 on the last one. Is it, it, it does it start at B3 at the edge of this one? Because it should, <laughs> you know, okay, you're playing like, like that. that kind of grid game. That's a great tip. Thank you. Yeah. And again, I've done those like multi map ones and they are a little nerve wracking, but um, if you're going to do a multi map one for your first one, I would recommend trying a symmetrical one, like the the eyeball one I did was really fun. And part of what was cool about it is that I only had to, I had to redo the direction the pupil was in order to get all four of those to work. Mm -hmm. But otherwise I got to keep the circle intact. So I knew stuff was gonna line up because it was literally the same circle. Something I like here at this pixel frame is that you have all these like, um, what's the word? Like everything's marked out with like, you know, A6, A7, you know? The other pixel frames don't have that as far as I'm aware, so that makes things a lot easier to sort of figure out where you are. Yeah, that was one of the things that I, like, I really knew that was going to be a struggle, is just being able to orient where you're standing on the map and like yeah you can like put down a couple of pixels and be like oh, okay now i see kind of where i'm at but if it's like a a complicated background and you're trying to do like a gradient or something just laying down like a couple of pixels is not actually going to be easy for to orient to to see appear on the map uh, and so yeah, being able to go like, okay, I'm at like G, I'm at like H3. Okay, so now I can go back to my template and go back and forth, back and forth, and figure out where the hell I'm at. <laughs> so, yeah, I really like it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to keep the grid super helpful, even with the background being weird. So, like I said, it's currently under construction, so it will get even easier to, to read again once I finished that. It's very well thought out. Okay. Um, and Rad is actually here witnessing our class. I didn't even realize someone was in here. Um, um, I was actually gonna ask you, Brian, if it was okay if I like maybe made the pixel farm overview document into like a blog post. Oh yeah, absolutely. Blog always needs more Pretty posts, general so information. Feel free to right. put anything on it whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that this um, background for the mayor portraits exists because I didn't think about this till I'm standing here holding this painting in my hand, but not painting, um, map in my hand. But like I probably would have just started with using this side as the bottom and then my painting would be sideways so that would have been terrible i mean you can rotate paintings so i mean it would have been okay oh i mean i you can because yeah. you're like on the wall but not in your hand i guess yeah 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 not your hand, but you can do it <laughs> when you said you can rotate paintings i was thinking like i could just hold it a different way and i was like wait really oh yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would be, that would be silly, <laughs> but yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that you had that reference before you started something. <laughs> yes, I am too. How, so how do we go about renting the space and everything? Um, just kind of let me know how long you think you need it for, and I will let you know when we can schedule that in, depending on what other needs are happening. Like right now, there's no current uh reservation specific reservations coming up i just have a little bit of construction that needs to get finished before and mostly just clean up what i'm 
doing with finishing the grid. Um, and then it could be available. Um, I recommend, you know, at, reserving at least like two or three weeks at a time for a single art piece. Um, How long not does to it typically discourage take? you. I mean, it really, really depends on how complicated it is. Like, if you have a noise, it, it's... So, like, try to let me know if this doesn't, like, land for you, but Brian, since you're a Photoshop person, uh, like, think about, like, the noise of, like, if you're looking at an image of a field of flowers and you zoom in and you realize how many different colored pixels are next to each other, that kind of image is going to take a lot longer to lay down pixel by pixel by pixel. That makes but sense. if you have something like the mayor portrait, or you're trying to make a Minecraft golden apple that is the size of the map, <laughs> that's going to be a lot of just yellow. So a lot of areas that you can just kind of like zone out and just lay down pixels and just go back and forth chunk at a time. And then that goes a lot faster. So it really drastically depends on the, the type of image uh, you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, good example. Are example there... A, if you're trying to do a golden apple. Are there other um, materials besides wool down there? Is it just wool? I guess there is. There is a few other materials. We mostly just have the wool stuff. There is a little bit of these other colors in here. You'll see when I... you, if you... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you'll see in the document there is a cost uh, sliding scale recommendations, and one of them is donated materials. It's a great way to pay for uh, templates and or time reserved at the farm. So that is one of the areas that we don't have very much of, but we have a little bit. Gotcha. <laughs> I said the, the painting that I was looking to do asked for a lot of, like, stone and stuff. Mm, there is. I have a lot of stone available just from my personal collections as well. So depending on the material, there I might have some of it that's just not right here. Um, I think the um, next Terra farm has the biggest stock of, of other blocks since Moffer spends all her time yeah. there. Yes. And... As you can see from this sign, Moffer has stolen supplies from here. So if you need to borrow pixels from <laughs> Mayfair, I'm sure she'd be fine with that. <laughs> she just gets away with don't know when she this wants. was. <laughs> don't know if this was returned. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, if you need to borrow pixels from there, I'm sure she'd be fine with that because she usually has an excess of if of colors that she's not actively <laughs> using. Got it. Uh, And there's cartography tables down here and uh, just barrels to put your pockets, empty your pockets into while you're filling your inventory with carpets. Uh, there's also a bunch of map, blank maps here and glass. Feel free to use these to lock your maps or make check what you're doing. There's also past designs in here if you want to check these out. So because of the weird map, glitches. You know, there's no names on any of them. You just have to get them into your inventory to see the name of it. But they're all in there. They're all cute, and you can make copies of them and stuff if you want. <laughs> I think that's basically all I had. I see Charles' internet cut out again, so hopefully they can watch the, <laughs> the video if they missed anything. But... Sorry, I'm just nosily looking at all these other past ones. Oh no, that's great. Please do there, bud. I also have a little, if you don't want to like waste too much time, there's a little decoration over here of most of the past ones. Oh, great. It's on display next to the rail right here. It's not totally complete. I need to update it. A bunch of them. Look how all, all of the like technical paintings have been done here. Yeah. 
like all of the utilitarian <laughs> ones. Yep. <laughs> what is this heart on a field? I've never seen this before. Oh, that was like my very first one. That I did it as like a thank you to Ruby for Aww. inviting me to come. Oh, oh that's so cute. It's just like I just, I just did it for her, and that's <laughs> a, like her and I were talking about it, and then I think it was like the next like couple of weeks that she's like. I'm ready for bear. Should we make a bear sign? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and the pixel farm was born. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks great. I can't wait to come here and use it because I feel like this is the one that mm, nobody books up as much as the other ones. So, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I was gonna use the Akala one, but then I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't want to waste too much time because other people want to book it. So, I mean, yes, this is. This is the one that I consider be the most focused on education and just experimenting on figuring stuff out. So this is the place to do it for sure. <laughs> Hooray. Well, I appreciate Yay. you taking yeah. the time to show us around and everything and, and make a really cool document guide for us. Especially. Yes. And yeah, and I didn't, I'm sorry I didn't have like hands on stuff, but if there's more like specific, like, skills or techniques anybody wants to learn I'm happy to teach it I just I knew that it was going to be kind of a lot to just show people around and just kind of explain the gist of how stuff works anyway <laughs> so I didn't want to overwhelm people <laughs> you can always do a pixel frame not so basics next semester right <laughs> that's what I was thinking <laughs> And then maybe we can do like another quilt out of that or something. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Alrighty. Alright. Well, yeah, let me know if, if and when you want to do your next, your first pixel art and we'll get a, an image figured out. I have to stress about it Put for at least three more stuff. months. Oh, okay. But well, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. Should I put this map back somewhere? Yeah, sure. If you want to push, put it back in, just in these blank maps. Okay. Yes. Okay, got it. All right, well, thank you for the class. Yes, thank you great. for joining me. And gonna... thank you to Trial, even though they had to leave for their <laughs> Minecraft crash. <laughs> I think they're still in the Discord, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to end this stream here then, at least. Perfect.